There have been changes to outputting data from your spreadsheet into a web application so you can make the fetch request so that everything still works and there's actually more options on the data that we're selecting so we can do query strings like this to whatever 20 if we have more than 20 items and that's going to update and change the output of the content. You can also select specific columns and then output those columns and this is data that's coming directly from the spreadsheet. Lesson is going to address the new changes to getting data from your spreadsheet if you are interested in making updates and getting your data from the spreadsheet to connecting to Google Sheets data. So there is a new way to make that connection and I'll walk you through that within this lesson. So go over to your Google Drive and I'm gonna just create a brand new sheet. Uh, so this is gonna be my testing sheet where we're gonna connect to this sheet and pull the data that's available from the sheet. So giving the sheet a name and then we're gonna put some column headings here, last ID, value, and so on. So these are going to be counted as the headings for the sheet. You can also give the sheet a name as well to identify the sheet and then populate some data into the sheet and update the IDs as well so that we have unique IDs. So that gives us some dummy data to work with. Now in order to share the sheet to the API, this is going into the regular share settings of the Google spreadsheet file. And that's up here in the top right hand corner, or you can go within the drive share settings. So select the share button and select down below where it says get link and change to anyone with the link. And then you can copy the link address. So the link address is going to be the same link that we've got to that spreadsheet data. So let's go into our JavaScript update the word wrap so that we can see the path to the document. And now we want to make a fetch request and return the data back into our web page. Create a div that we can use to output the contents into. And then we'll make our fetch request the URL that we're going to be connecting to. So the URL that we're connecting to is going to be the docs.google.com forward slash spreadsheet, forward slash D, and then the ID of your spreadsheet. And at the end of this, add in Google VIZ for the Google visualization of the data and TQ with a question mark. So that will give us the path in order to make the connection. So by default, it will select whatever the first spreadsheet is, make a connection to that, and it'll also return it back within a JSON format for default. You can also change it to a CSV format as well. And then you can do some query selections. So I'll show you some examples of those after we make the initial fetch request. So we make the fetch request to the URL, and then once we get a response back, we're returning the response back as a text object. And then we're going to use JavaScript to pull out the data into a JSON format. Console log out the response object. Just move this indent it slightly. I'm using Visual Studio Code with live server. So let's uh, open up the live server for the web application. And there's the app running. Uh, we're outputting the content in the console. So that's nothing that's going to show up on the screen yet. Let's open up the dev tools. And under the DevTools console, this is the response object that we're getting back. So just do a quick refresh there because it's looking for the fav icon. Uh, so this is not exactly an object, a usable object, and that's why we can't return it back as JSON because it's got excess code. So it's got some excess in the beginning, and what we're after is the content between those rounded brackets. So the, when it starts with the curly brackets and ends with the curly brackets, that's going to be the actual JavaScript object that we want to use, and then we want to turn that into a JSON object. So let's uh, format that data we're going to do some JavaScript methods in order to format the content. And I'm going to rename this uh, data down here. And then sub string, we're going to chop off the first 47 characters. And then using slice, we're going to slice the last two characters off of the string. So that will return only the data content. We'll take a look at it in the console. And so this is going to be in a string data object format. And then we can use the JSON parse in order to parse that back into a usable object format in JavaScript. And now we've got the usable object format in JavaScript. And we've got all of the columns of data. 
and notice that there are some excess columns. Uh, so in order to clean that up, you can remove out all of the empty columns from your spreadsheet. Uh, so that can be done directly within the spreadsheet. So now when we make the request, we should only have the five columns of data that we actually have columns in, or four columns of data. And then we've got the rows of data below here, and each one of these contains an array of the data. So now in order to output the content, we would output the columns, and then we can go through and iterate through the rows of data and return back the values for each one of the items within the row. So let's do that. We're in, we've got it within a data format. We can loop through data, table, columns, and using for each, this is gonna be each one of the headings. And for now, we'll log it out into the console and actually just call that heading. Uh, so this uh, returns back the top row of content. And I'm gonna turn this into a table and then add some JavaScript into the output area. So let's uh, use JavaScript and document using query selector. We'll select the element with a class of output. And then that's gonna be the table where we're gonna append content into. And then as we loop through the different rows of data, we're gonna create a new row. And that's uh, using the document create element. And the element that we're gonna create is gonna be a table row. And append that to output. So output append row. And then we'll do the same where we're going to get the heading data. And this is just going to be whatever the cell is. And it's going to create a table cell, appending the cell to the row. So that we get start getting some output on the screen. And we need to add some content into the cell. So we can see under the label, this is going to be the ID for the cell. So let's add the value for the cell. And the text content is going to be coming from the heading value and heading label value. So save it. So that gives us our first row for the headings. And now we want to iterate through the rest of the content where we've got the rows of content. So let's get rid of the console message there. Through the table rows, we want to iterate through the rows of data and output those as rows. So select that and it's going to be very similar. We're going to loop through, but instead of the columns, we're looping through the rows. And then this is going to be each row of data. And I'll just call it main because it's going to be the, the main content. And this is going to be an array as well. We want to create a main container and then append that container to the output and then append the cell contents to the container. So we need to actually loop through the contents of that array. We want to loop through the main content and we want to go through each one of the items within the array. And that can just uh, be each one of the elements. And we're going to create the cells just as we did over here. And then for each one of these cells, we want to get the content that's contained for the value of V. So that's going to be contained within the element V object. So it looks like uh, we threw an error there. So let's uh, log out the value of main and I'll uh, comment out this as we debug it. So it's actually main C to get to the data and then that's gonna be array based. So instead of main, we have to do main C for the right object to get to the array. And then that way we're able to output the contents of the spreadsheet directly out into our web page. And now if we make any updates to the sheet data and refresh the page, we can see that now the contents of the actual output have changed as well. So that's how you can get the sheet data out into your web page. And that's using uh, JavaScript in order to connect to the endpoint and then sort through the data of the spreadsheet and output the data that you wanna use. So now with the newer format, we can also make query requests. So we can encode different query requests. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so if we have our main query, and let's say we want to select A and B only to return back. So these need to be uppercase. And these are gonna be referring to the column 
values there. So we want to return back A and B. So that's going to be actually our query. So we need to encode that query. And we can encode it using the encode URI component method within JavaScript. So that's going to create a query for us. We can log the query out into the console so we can see what it was going to look like when we make that request. I'm going to hide some of the console messages there. Let's go back into the application, open up the window a little bit bigger. So that's what we're going to be selecting, just A and B. And in order to make that selection, we can add in the selecting object, which is going to be that uh, we're just doing a request to the TQX. So add to the main URL that we're making the request to. So that means that we should move this up before we make the fetch request and update the URL. So we're going to be taking the URL and adding to the URL the query object. So we can do it like this, uh, where we're concatenating to the URL and we're adding in the query. So for the query, we do need to include the and TQ as we are making the query and then we can include the query object. So that will update the URL and return back the, only the queried values. So we're only querying for column A and B. Uh, we can also be specific A and C. So return back only A and C if we wanted to. Uh, you can also do uh, more specific. So where, and we can see where the value of C is greater than three. So it will only return back that matching parameter. Uh, you also have a limit. So this is similar to what you find with SQL queries. Uh, so now you can query your spreadsheet data in this type of format. So it's not necessary if you're returning back the whole spreadsheet, but if you only want to get specific parts of the spreadsheet, then you can be more specific on the content that you're outputting and requesting and returning back. So that's how you can access your spreadsheet. And this is a newer method uh, with more power that you can make these types of specific selections within your spreadsheet data.